Welcome back to another video. Of course, you join me once again on Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every each and every Tuesday we bring a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. And this week, we're going to dive into Photoshop. It's not been the best weather, to be honest. I had some other stuff planned. But because of the greyness and the wetness and all the just general cold and horribleness, we're going to dive into Photoshop and we're going to look at something called Depth Blur. Of course, if you have anything in particular you'd like to see in a Tutorial Tuesday, absolutely let me know down in the comments. Also, why are you down there? Maybe let me know, is this jumper too Christmassy or is it appropriately wintry? Because I like it, but I'm, I'm concerned. I don't want to be Christmasing it up. In January. Anyway, let's dive into Photoshop. So we're going to be looking at something called Depth Blur. Now, this is a great way of adding what is quite a realistic kind of depth of field blur to your images. It's very quick, it's very easy, and we're going to go through exactly how you do it and when it works, when it might not work, and what you can do to fix certain things. Now, this isn't just a replacement for having a good lens, to be honest, because while it is good, and it can absolutely help with some images. It's not perfect, and it, it just isn't a replacement. There's not gonna be a replacement for an f1.2 lens, for example, an 85 f1.4. You're not gonna be able to, not yet anyway, you're not gonna be able to completely replicate that perfectly. So let's have a look at what we can do though. So we've got this photo here, I've got a few photos loaded up so we can just dive in. I've not done anything to this. This is an edited photo from a couple of years ago, but, I've just literally imported this into Photoshop. I'm going to come straight up here to Filter, and I'm going to go to Neural Filters here. Now, this is something we've looked at before. We've opened up various things here, skin smoothing we've looked at, things like Landscape Mixer, we can change the seasons, things like uh, Smart Portrait, but we're going to look at Depth Blur. Now, if you don't have this, if this is kind of greyed out here, or if the, the little switch here isn't there, there'll be a little cloud with an arrow. You just click that to download the filter. It doesn't take a minute, but just download that. And then we can turn this on. And what Photoshop is gonna do is essentially apply a depth of field blur to the image. You can probably see down the bottom, it said processing on device, and it's just done it there. It's just done it with kind of default settings. Now, actually, it's not done a terrible job, to be honest, just straight out the, straight out the gate, but, there are a few things that we can do to kind of improve this, and then we can look at any problems that might arise, how we can overcome them, and so on. So let's have a look. So this is the actual panel that will open up. We've got a few options for how we can proceed. So we can actually click somewhere on this image to select a focal point. So for example, I could click on Matilda here so that she becomes the focal point. It'll just refocus. It had pretty much done that anyway. And now we've got out of focus in the back she's the focal point you can see it's starting to go out of focus here as well like it would with a lens but the other and i would say generally better option is to click focus subject here you can see there's a little tick box if we just tick that on what photoshop is going to do is it's going to work out what the subject is in the photo it's going to make that perfectly in focus that's the focal point and apply the blur in the appropriate places either side now the reason that that's better than just selecting a focal point yourself is that it often means that the edges of the focal point and things like that are, are much cleaner, much, much better. You know, Photoshop has got a very, very good and very strong built-in subject detection kind of interface that it uses for uh, all kinds of things. Masking in general has got a very, very good select subject engine. I don't know for sure whether it's using that here, but it, it seems like it is because it seems to work extremely well. So let's have a look at this before we change anything else. If we actually just look at this image, can we zoom in here? Yes. So if we hold Alt and use the mouse wheel, we can zoom in. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, this blur. The way it. The way it kind of naturally. It's almost like a gradient coming down. So you can see the bits in the background are much more blurred, and as we get closer and closer, it's less and less blurred. So this grass, for example, is less, way less blurred than the trees in the background. Then we've got the focal plane with Matilda as our subject. And as we come back here, we've got more blur kind of in the foreground, as it would be with depth of field. Now you can see it's pretty good. The, the actual masking around her is pretty good indeed. If we look at her hair, it's pretty good, but there are a couple of issues. For example, her shoelace here, maybe a little bit here. We can actually fix those in certain ways. But let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the rest of the panel before we move on. So we can change things like focal distance. We can't at the moment because we've got the subject as our actual 
focal point, but if we didn't have a focal point selected, we could just move the focal plane within the image. We've got things like focal range as well, which we can change. Now that's gonna change the look of the blur. So if I bring that up to 50, it's going to reduce that blur. So you see here now the background is less blurred. That can work better for some images. We can bring that all the way up to 100 and we're gonna get much more kind of depth of field. So this is essentially controlling what kind of depth of field we have. So if we bring that down to 25, we're gonna have a shallow depth of field, but not as shallow, for example, as zero. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And if we scroll down here, we can see there's a few other options. So for example, we can add things like grain to the image. Now that's a great way of, for example, if the blur is blurring out grain. So if you've got a grainy photo, the subject might still be grainy, but adding blur to it will kind of get rid of that grain in the background you can add that back in. So it's gonna look a bit more natural. Things like color, temperature, tint, that's a really useful way of separating your subject from the background. So for example, if I was to bring the tint down to minus 35, that's gonna make the background there much more kind of green. Yeah, there we go. Which can work really well in terms of kind of separating a subject. Let's leave that like that, I actually quite like that. We can also affect the blur strength. So at the moment it's set at 50, but if we bring it up to 100, you'll see that the background will blur right out there we go. So it looks it looks good, but it's yeah, that is pretty blurry. So these things can affect kind of how your image looks. So let's let's bring the focal range up to about 30, but with the blur strength at 100. Let's see what that looks like. I quite like that. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now, before we do that, actually, you can see here we can output this. I always do it to a new layer, but we can do it to a new layer mask. We can do it to a smart filter, to a new document. Let's just go for a new layer. Let's click OK. Now, what that's going to do is actually just create a new layer right above our original layer here. We can turn that off to see what it used to look like. Turn it back on. Super easy, to be honest. So let's move over to something like this, for example. Now, this has already got a little bit of blur in the background. This is taken on the Fujifilm 18mm. Let's go ahead and add the neural filter. Let's go ahead and add... Why am I saying go ahead? Let's go ahead. That's better and add depth blur to this. So let's go ahead and click. Now I can't stop saying it. Now I can't stop saying let's go ahead. Don't worry, I'm gonna sort myself out. Let's click focus subject here. So it's gonna focus on our subject here in the foreground. It's gonna apply some blur to the background. I really like that. Let's even bring the blur strength up a little bit to something like 70. I think this is gonna look pretty good, but you can probably already see part of the problem. Now, having focus subject ticked on is good because it means that the lines around our subject here are nice and clean. The hair is actually pretty good as well. But here we come to some of the issues with depth blur. So first of all, there's no way within this panel to actually adjust the mask. So obviously we've, we've selected to focus on the subject. Photoshop's done a great job of selecting our subject here, but we can't adjust the mask in any way which is a real shame because as you can see, his phone here is completely blurred out, which just looks just looks silly, just looks silly. There's no way that it should be like that. Now we can increase the focal range. So let's go to something like 30. That's gonna help by creating a bit more of a kind of a, a deeper depth of field, but it's not gonna be enough to, uh, to sort that phone out there. So not to worry, the rest of the blur looks really good. So it's much more blurred in the background, but we've still got an idea of the sunset going on. And as it comes closer, it's becoming less and less blurred. So let's go ahead and click OK. Let's select this onto a new layer. And I'm going to show you what we can do in this situation. Now, this isn't going to work in every single situation. But for this one, for example, where we've got a nice clean sky background, we can sort it. So we can come up here to layer one, which is the new layer. We just click create layer mask. Let's zoom in on this problematic area here. Now, what we're going to have to do, everything is white on the layer mask, which means everything is revealed. Let's go ahead and get our paintbrush black and we're going to actually paint over this phone. What that's going to do is just hide this particular part of the image from the depth blur layer that we've got here. So if we just paint with black over the phone, we can just bring that back. Now, the reason that is so easy is because the sky is just really, really easy to work with. There's a nice clean just color really so you can't tell whether that's blurred or not you know if i if i paint black over this sky there's no real difference to as it was the cloud there you can see but we don't have any cloud around the phone so it works really well so if i zoom back out now we've got a nice clean subject selected here nice and easy let's turn off this layer 
turn it back on. Now you can see there's a couple of issues here with the hairs. If I turn this off again, you can see it's not selected the hairs perfectly. I think it's kind of done a good enough job. I mean, I could bring down the flow with the black paintbrush to about 25% and just paint in some of this. Because the cloud behind is, is just a uniform color, we can actually get this back without, without really too much of a problem. But this is only going to work when you've got a specific image like this, you know, when you've got a situation where the background is not busy. If it's busy, you're going to be removing the blur. It's going to be very obvious and very weird. Whereas here, because we've got uniform colors, it's really easy to work with. So we can bring that back. So in this example, actually, it works really well. If I turn this off, that's what it was like. This is what it is like now. So we've not added a crazy amount of blur, but we've just added enough to get nice separation with our subject. And that's essentially the basics of depth blur within Photoshop. Now, this is a, a really useful tool for certain things, right? If you've only got a kit lens, this can be a great way of adding a certain look to your portraits. And especially if you use it sparingly, it can be pretty useful to be honest. It can be a pretty nice way of creating those kind of bokehlicious portraits. Now, if you've got a better lens, a prime lens, even a nifty 50, a 50 mil f1.8, you're going to get better results. Realistically, in camera, it's just always going to be better. It's just always going to give you better results. But this is a really useful piece of software to kind of play around with and to get an idea of how things might look with depth of field. And it can be a really useful thing to add on if you've got a bit of blur already, just to up that a little bit. If you didn't quite get the look you were going for, you could just add that in. Would I use it professionally? I mean, probably not, but I could imagine times where maybe I would use it at just a touch, you know, just subtly to enhance some blur, to just add something onto the photo, especially if I didn't have the right gear at the time or if I was using a specific type of lens to get a specific type of shot, but I wanted a bit of a, a shallow depth of field look. I can imagine using this to almost fill in a couple of blanks like that. Would I take a bit of time with masking and stuff afterwards? Absolutely. So I'd apply it and then I'd absolutely go ahead and change it with layer masks and stuff like that. Of course, we could do a full tutorial about that if you'd be interested. But I think this gives a good overview of what depth blur is, what it's capable of doing. And hopefully it shows off. Yes, it's it's a pretty interesting and, and fun thing to use, to be honest, but also some of the problems that you can come up against as well. Now, like I say, if you want a full tutorial of how I'd overcome those problems, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, of course, I will be seeing you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But until then, thanks for watching.